Okay, so in this example, we're going to go over how to use the differential approach to solve for another equation. Um, in this one, the switch opens at time equal to zero, so we're going to look at before time equal to zero when that switch has been closed for a very long time. Um, whenever the switch has been closed for a very long time and there's a source throwing, flowing into the capacitor, the capacitor will act as an open circuit. Um, so let me just redraw this really quick. So I've just gone ahead and redrawn it with the capacitor replaced with an open with an open circuit and um, the switch closed. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and I can combine some of these resistors. The 4 and the 8 are in series, um, but they're in parallel with the 12. So we have 4 plus 8, that's 12, in parallel with another 12, that's going to give us 6. Um, now on this side, since this is an open circuit here, this 3 basically um, is like void, it doesn't count anymore. But we have the uh, voltage VC over the capacitor that we're concerned about, which is right here, plus VC, and the minus on that side. Whenever this current goes down, we can think of this as being one wire. So down here is the same. So we can redraw this as... Um, And notice how the positive sign falls towards the bottom and then the negative sign stays towards the top. So we'll have a positive VC negative. Um, and then these 4 and this 12 are also going to combine. These share the same two points right here connecting them and right here. So we know that these are in parallel. So we have 4 and 12 in parallel, which is going to be um, 48 over 16, which is going to give us 3, I think, hopefully. I'm going to put 3. Um, <laughs> I don't have a calculator. Um, so we have this one right here is going to be 3. That's our VC plus and minus. And then we still have that 12 volts. I'm going to replace all those resistors with that 6 that we found. Now we can use um, nodal analysis to solve for that VC. Since we have the negative sign up here on the top, I'm going to label this node a negative VC. This one I'm just going to label like node VB. Um, and I know that VB is on the positive side, so I can say positive VB minus, from the negative side, the negative VC is equal to the 12 volts in between them, so I can say that VB plus VC is equal to 12. And now I can find the nodal f at um, the super node, negative VC VB. So we have negative VC, we'll call this ground right here, over 3. And then we have plus VB over 6 is equal to 0. So this is going to give us um, 2VC is equal to VB, which we can go ahead and plug back up in here. And we will see that VC is equal to 4. Um, because we'll have 2VC up here subbed for the VB and then that's going to turn into 3VC. We'll divide the 3 away into the 12 and we'll get 4. Um, so now we're going to look at the circuit after um, the switch is closed. So here I've redrawn the circuit with the switch open at time a little bit after um, 0. What we're still looking for is we're looking for the voltage over the capacitor, so we're looking for VC, and we want it in the form of A1 dy over dt plus AO um, y is equal to F. Here the y is going to represent either the voltage or the current. So we're going to go ahead and simplify this down the circuit now. So we're going to have the capacitor with plus VC. And that's going to be connected to the 3 ohm resistor. And then the 4 and the 12 can be shrunk down to a 3 ohm resistor since they're in parallel. 
the rest is shorted out because we have that open circuit there. Um, and I've already minimized all the other resistors down to the 6. But it doesn't really matter because they don't really play a part in this uh, circuit because they're shorted. Um, so now we have the 3 and the 4. And we can do loop analysis on this with the current I. So we have I is equal to the two resistors. That resistor that I made of 4 is actually supposed to be a 3, so let me just fix that really quick. Times the two resistors, which is going to be 6. And then as we're going around the loop, we're going to hit this positive sign on the VC, so we're going to have plus VC is equal to 0. Now you're probably thinking, well, we have two unknowns. How is that going to help me solve for anything? But we have the formula um, I is equal to dv dtc. So we can go ahead and um, move that C to the other side as well as the dv. Um, I mean the dt. So we can have 1 over C I dt is equal to dv. Now if we take the integral of both sides then we're going to have um, 1 over C integral of I over dt and it gets rid of the D on the dv so we're just left with V and that's the voltage over capacitor so we could go ahead and replace what we just found um, for VC so we just plug this in where VC is So now we have I6 is equal to oops, I6 um, plus uh, 1 over C I dt. is equal to 0. Now both of these I's are going to be the IC that we're looking for. Um, so we could actually, since we want this in the form of dy dt is equal to y, and this one is the integral, and then this one is just normal. If we take the derivative, we're going to get the derivative of this first one. So it's going to look like uh, di dt 6. And once we take the derivative of an integral, we're going to get just the normal equation. So we're going to have 1 over c i. So that's going to be in the form that we wanted up here at the top, where we have the dy um, dt and then the just y by itself. And then we have equal to f, which is 0. Um, so we can see from here that our a1 is going to be 6, um, and our ao is going to be 1 over c. So we have uh, a1 divided by ao is equal to tau. which is equal to um, the 6 divided by 1 over C and the capacitance here was 50 um, 50 UFs and then um, the resistance was kilo ohms so make sure we keep that K in there. I kept the units off because um, normally they don't matter that much but in this one it does because we have the K and then we have the um, the microfarads down there. So if we multiply this out, our tau is going to be equal to 0 0.3. Now we've solved for um, we've solved for the initial t. We've solved for tau. Um, so now we just have to solve for k and k1, or k1 and k2. So K1 is equal to the F over the AO. Since our F is 0, our K1 is going to be 0. Now we can use these two in the next formula to solve for K2, and we'll be all done. <coughs> so the formula is K1 plus K2 e to the negative t minus t initial over tau is equal to... Um, v of t since we're solving for the voltage over the capacitor. Now if you remember way back in the beginning we said that our um, voltage at v of 0 was equal to 4 volts. 
so we could say that k1, which was 0, I'll just write these on the side here, So we have 0 plus k2 e to the 0 is equal to, and we have e to the 0 here because we're using the initial value of time 0 um, is equal to what voltage, and here we have 4 volts that it's equal to. Um, so now we can just solve for k, so k2 is actually going to be equal to 4 volts. So we can plug that back in along with everything else and we'll be all done with this equation. So we have V of T is equal to K1, which is 0, so we're going to leave that out, plus K2, which is 4E to the negative T. Our initial TO was also 0, so we're going to leave that out, divided by tau, which is 0 0.3, and that one is all solved.